in the 1940 United States presidential election, Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt faced off against Republican Wendell Wilkie. Roosevelt was running for an unprecedented third term. Wendell Wilkie was an unlikely Republican choice. He was a businessman who held no prior political office and had been a lifelong Democrat. He only switched parties in 1939, a year prior to the election. He wasn't even a candidate in the primaries. However, Wilkie had positioned himself as a choice in case none of the candidates received enough votes. This turned out to be the case. Senator Robert A. Taft's isolationist policies were looking less favorable in light of the emerging Nazi threat, as was the lack of foreign policy experience of the otherwise promising Thomas Dewey. Taking a chance, Republican leaders selected Wilkie. Roosevelt was caught off guard. He'd expected to run against a conservative. Wilkie actually supported many of Roosevelt's social welfare programs. His main contention was, as he saw it, Roosevelt's poor management. Wilkie gained significant national attention due to his passionate rhetoric and charisma on the campaign trail. Despite being a black horse, he quickly became popular, especially with young voters. He even challenged Roosevelt to radio debates. At the time, debates weren't standard as they are in the modern political era. Roosevelt declined. Roosevelt would eventually win the election with a landslide in electoral votes and a margin of 5 million in the popular vote. This was likely in part due to Roosevelt's already established popularity, though numerous blunders during Wilkie's campaign undoubtedly hurt his chances. The following year, in 1941, Wilkie quickly allied himself with Roosevelt. On January 13th, he gave his support for Roosevelt's proposed foreign aid effort the Lend-Lease program. The Republican Party was widely opposed to Lend-Lease. Seen as the de facto Republican leader, Wilkie's endorsement showed bipartisan support. A day prior to Roosevelt's third swearing in, the two met at the White House. They found common ground in supporting international efforts. Roosevelt even requested Wilkie serve as his informal representative to Britain. Over the following years, Wilkie would make several foreign trips. These trips showed U.S. support for the war-torn countries on Roosevelt's behalf. Wilkie would argue on the Senate floor and be a voice in heated political battles. While he was often on Roosevelt's side, especially on international issues, he opposed him on social issues. He targeted Roosevelt for catering to Southern Democrats and thereby hurting African Americans. Largely, he attacked both parties for overlooking racial strife. Nevertheless, on the world stage, the two showed camaraderie. Roosevelt even said of Wilkie, quote, The leader of the Republican Party himself, Mr. Wendell Wilkie, in word and in action, is showing what patriotic Americans mean by rising above partisanship and rallying to the common cause. Of course, the alliance had political benefits. It reinforced Roosevelt's position as a competent leader who could unite both parties. Wilkie had hoped it would help him in the election of 1944. This was not the case. While he was being praised by the media and Roosevelt, Republican opinion soured. Wilkie entered the 1944 Republican primaries, but after a lackluster performance early on, he dropped out. For Wilkie, this was a bitter defeat. But Roosevelt faced his own problem. He wanted to drop his vice president and pick a new running mate. Roosevelt put out word that he was considering Wilkie. But Wilkie was disheartened. He felt as though he'd been used by Roosevelt for political gain. More fuel for animosity was that Roosevelt had leaked several of their correspondences. Roosevelt did try to make amends. He sent letters discussing his interest in starting a new liberal party in opposition to both Republicans and Democrats. It would be his next mission following the conclusion of the war, and he wanted Wilkie to help him in founding it. But Wilkie showed no interest, stating, quote, I've been lied to for the last time. There is a chance the two reconciled in the following months. Roosevelt's son claimed that the two agreed to meet in 1944 and that Roosevelt had planned to make Wilkie his Secretary General of the United Nations. But this never happened, as in October of 1944, Wilkie died. 
Throughout his life, he was a heavy drinker and was known to be neglectful of his overall health. In 1944, while Wilkie was involved with politics, his health rapidly declined. He was eventually hospitalized and died after suffering multiple heart attacks. He was only 52. Roosevelt commented on the death, saying, quote, In this hour of grave crisis, the nation loses a great citizen. Like Wilkie, however, Roosevelt too wouldn't survive to see the end of the war. He died on April 12, 1945 just months into his fourth term at 63. His plan of a new liberal party would never be realized. Despite Wendell Wilkie's failures as a political candidate, he is generally remembered fondly for his international efforts and willingness to work with his political enemies. To support regular uploads from this channel, consider subscribing and donating to Resyndicated on Patreon. Donations from 2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.